Hi, my name's Carolyn Mendelssohn. I'm a, a photographer and filmmaker, and I'm based in Bradford District. So my inspirations for this project started really with my memories of being between the age of 10 to 12. I have really strong memories of that time. I remember feeling incredibly uncomfortable in my own skin and really self-conscious. All these memories of this age and my kind of growing awareness of how fragile girls are at this age and how much the things that people can say can affect the way they see themselves made me really think about doing a piece of work where I was exploring that age group, where I was giving girls of that age, in some ways, the little, me, really, was kind of starting point was my experience, but giving girls of that age the opportunity to be who they are and to be celebrated as they are so when it came to the portrait sittings, before it got to that point, I would say that I'd give a set of instructions. So I'd say, number one, um, I'm going to do a portrait of you, but I would like it if you wore the clothes of your choice. I don't want there to be parental intervention. Um, I'm also going to ask you questions about your lives, about your hopes and your fears and your dreams. So they would come and uh, I would talk them through how I would use the light. Also, if you look at the pictures, you can see that the girls are looking at us. And that was an intentional decision. I wanted those girls to have, to, to have power. And so I explained to the young people who were participating, I want you to look straight into the camera. But I don't want you to stare because what I would love is when, when we see the picture, that you're looking at us, you're looking at the audience or the viewers. I would also, uh, we would also have a discussion about how they might stand, because it was important to me that how they were standing was really um, natural to them. So some girls might want to stand with their arms folded, and or sometimes it might be, we try different things like they might, they might kind of stand slightly at the side with her face there. They might stand with their arm there. It would be really a negotiation and a joint process between myself and them. And the starting point for that was, as a photographer, you're really powerful. And I wanted to really create a mutual process where they could equally take part in, in the telling of their own story. So I do the portrait. And then we go into a separate space and I would, I had the same set of questions. So I'd start off with what's your name? How old are you? What are your hobbies? What is your dream? What do you hate? What do you love? What do you want to be when you're grown up? What are your hopes for the future? So all, all kinds of questions like that. All of the girls have had a big impact on me. They've all been different. They've all been singular in, in their dreams and their aspirations. I have really strong memories of Olivia coming. She was 12. And this was probably in 2015. Olivia came to um, the studio that I was shooting the portraits at. She was like a very small 12-year-old, but with a massive amount of energy. And I was really taken with her. I remember asking her the questions. And at the end of the series of questions, because there were very defined questions, she stopped me and she said, is there anything else you would like me to talk about? None of the young people had said that to me before. And I said, oh, right, Olivia, um, have you got something you would like to tell me that I've not asked you about? She went, yes. I've had six major heart operations throughout my life. And then she proceeded to tell me something so major in her life that I hadn't even touched upon, um, that in some ways made sense of her absolute engagement in every moment. Um, and it also, she taught me that after the questions, always, always ask, is there anything else? Becca, um, I remember Becca and Lottie coming and they were the last two that came for portrait sittings. So February, 2020, the very final portraits I took. 
Becca um, is, is such an exceptional and humorous human being. She has cerebral palsy. She is, her twin sister is Lottie. They do a lot of things together. Becca just charmed me with her intelligence, her humor. She wore a t-shirt that her mum was a little bit concerned about. Becca chose a t-shirt which said, I'm only in it for the parking, with a picture of a wheelchair. And um, she had all these dreams and aspirations and she had lots of hobbies and she was really concerned that people in wheelchairs were given opportunities that able-bodied people have. Um, and her wish was to walk. Her wish was to go to the same places that her sister could go, to run with her sister, to walk with her sister, to climb trees with her sister. And she was not afraid to talk about this. But at the same time, she had a massive amount of humour and she wanted to make the world a better and easier place and more accessible to people that had physical challenges, were in wheelchairs. And um, she was brilliant. And the one thing that really touched me greatly is that at the end of the interview, I asked Becca and Lottie about what their experience was of being part of Being In Between. What did you think of being in Being In Between? Showing, showing what we really are. Yeah, showing who we really are and letting our voice be heard. And so we're not in the shadows. So you're not in the shadows. Thank you so much. Be Becca, thank you. Lottie, that was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. The really, really interesting thing for me about doing this project, particularly over like six years, a, a long period of time, um, and interviewing those girls with the same set of questions, was, was actually, I saw how their responses also reflected the changes in our world and our society, politically and, and socially at, at the time. Uh, initially, there, were, there, there, were lots of, there was lots of talk about self-image and about the pressure to conform and look a certain way and how it was important to feel it was all right to be who you are. There, there were young people talking about homelessness and their concern about poverty and war and terrorism. Um, and equality was a massive issue and people being treated well by other people, people not, not being mean to other people. And then um, as time went on, I remember they started to talk about, I think just over a year ago, climate change. And that was a huge thing in their lives. They were being educated on climate change within school, but also with amongst themselves, amongst their peer groups, it was a major concern. And then my last shoot was in February this year. I remember Lottie saying to me, and this is February, I have a real fear of coronavirus. And that was the first time it was mentioned. And I, I remember responding to her and saying, you know what, Lottie, so do I. I am really excited to say that Being In Between is being published, has been published as a book by Blue Coat Press. And not only that, but it has an essay written by Anne McNeil, who is director of Impressions Gallery and a forward by Zelda Cheetle. Not in a billion years did I imagine this was going to happen. It was a dream and now it's a reality and I really hope that you get hold of the book, that you see the faces of the girls, that you read their words and um, I hope the book goes all over the world. I think that this project, though it's based on my memories of being that age and it's about my view as a girl of that age, it's actually universal. It's about hope, it's about aspirations, it's about being at that very cusp of your future, of our future, of their futures. So I hope that people that come to see the work 
invest some of themselves when they see it and give those girls the space to have their moment and that it then maybe alters their perception of what girls of that age are capable of and what think and, and, and how they think and how they feel. I also hope that people see it not just as about girls but also about the humanity of this time and that it gives people a kind of hope for the future.